In this InspiredInsider.com interview, we talk with John Cobbs. He's CEO and co-founder of Apartment List. He's going to talk to us about how he got unbelievable list of advisors, which is key to the success of a company. He also talks about one of the pitches that he did and what him and his co-founder did that will actually just completely surprise you and blow you out of the water. But it works. That and much more coming up now. Weiss here. We're here with John Cobbs. He's CEO and co-founder of Apartment List. Hey, John. Um, just Hi. to tell you about, a little bit about John and Apartment List. Apartment List is the world's fastest growing apartment search engine, and it brings millions of listings from around the web in a one elegant interface. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. It is elegant, actually. Drastically reducing the time it takes renters to find an apartment. Uh, just some interesting facts about Apartment List. They have 46 full-time employees, 24 Ruby on Rails engineers. They have 500,000 listings nationwide from hundreds of data sources. In 2012, they reached $10 million in revenue, which is unbelievable, and this year are projected for $20 million. And what's even more unbelievable, which John will talk about, is the list of advisors that they have. Um, Scott Ingram founded Rent.com, which sold for $450 million. Simon Rothman founded eBay Motors. Lee Linden founded the mobile app Karma and sold it to Facebook. Brad Stroh built, founded Bills.com. And I always like to include one fun fact about a guest. And with John, his one of his favorite 80s television shows is Knight Rider. <laughs> is that right, John? Oh, yeah. Way to embarrass me. Jeez. <laughs> I gave you a heads up. <laughs> Anytime, anytime I see a David Hasselhoff, I've got to stop what I'm doing and watch. <laughs> nice. No, we get lots of comments, John, um, from people with tons of ideas. They don't know where to start, or they've started something, and they're not getting the traction they want. And one of the big keys is obviously finding someone who's already done it and finding a great mentor. And you've definitely done this. So I'm looking forward to you talking about how we can get mentors and advisors that launch us to the next level. Um, before we go into some of the successes you had with it, what's a big mistake you made early on when reaching out to a potential advisor that we should learn from? Sure. You know, the, made a lot of mistakes along the way. Uh, the, uh, one of the funnier ones, you know, you don't want to go out to folks before you're ready. And so if you're not polished, if you haven't rehearsed for 100 hours, you shouldn't be in front of anybody that you care about because their first impression of you is going to be their impression of you five years later in most cases. And so um, we were great at networking, but we were horrible at our pitch. We did not have our story down. And, you know, one of the early meetings, we, just, we didn't have anything down. We didn't have Silicon Valley down. Uh, we were a couple of finance geeks. You know, we worked in investment banking and venture debt, private equity. And um, this was like a brave new world for us being in Silicon Valley. Uh, so we were fortunate to get a meeting with uh, Benchmark, uh, with Matt Kohler, and I remember the night before the meeting, I was, we were so nervous. I'm like talking to my co-founder, I'm like, Chris, what are you going to wear? And he's like, oh, I don't know. I was thinking like jeans and a blazer. I'm like, no, no, man. What do you mean with Matt Kohler? You cannot wear jeans, man. And, uh, and he's like, what are you going with? I was like, I'm just going to go with some of my old finance, like, clothes. Like, I'm going to wear like some pleated pants, <laughs> some pleated, some, some pleated khakis and, and a blazer. We get there, we're dressed like idiots in our like, finance out costumes and uh and Matt Kohler walks into the room with ripped jeans and a ripped t shirt. <laughs> He's like, Who the hell are these? <laughs> That's... I want to get in front of the uh the big you know, the big players before you're ready for prime time. Got it. What so what you say the pitch was bad. What was bad about the pitch? Because I mean you've done many PowerPoints, you were, you know, in investment banking. What was bad about your pitch that you felt? Yeah, you know, when you don't have all of your ideas kind of um, run through your own personal gauntlet and your own inner circle gauntlet, like you need your friends, the smartest people you know, to play devil's advocate on you and really push back on every assumption you're making uh, because VCs, potential advisors, potential investors, potential, potential you know, future employees, they're going to be playing devil's advocate, that's for sure. And so you really need to put yourself through that gauntlet 
before you step onto a stage and do it. And so I think that was the biggest thing is we had to stress test all of our ideas, our assumptions, and our business model. And they ended up being right. You know, we ended up pivoting in a big way uh, from our early days. Yeah, that makes sense. Tell us, um, what, how did you get one of your first advisors? Yeah, so uh, you have to figure out what you're good at. And whatever that strength is, is what you want to show off in those early meetings. And so we were trying to raise money from some potential angel investors. And I had kind of penciled in, like, I'd love it if this one gentleman um, and, and his really good friend uh, would join our board. And that ended up being Brad Stroh, CEO of Bills.com, and Ariel Poehler, uh, just one of the most, you know, um, you know, predominant angels in Silicon Valley. Uh, just an amazing person. And so we had uh, a meeting with those two folks. And um, the meeting was uh, supposed to be talking about our business a little bit, but talking you know, about is there anything that we know from our past that we could apply to Bills.com and some of the struggles they're going through. Hmm. So basically we went in and talked about our business for five minutes and talked about their business for two hours. Uh, stole the whiteboard, wrote up everything I knew. <laughs> uh, and um, one of those, you know, what, that that like entire lesson, and, and just like the all, all the lessons that we had taken with us in those early days, was that that helped us get Brad Stroh really excited because he said, "Hey, these guys are willing to kind of take time out of their day when they're supposed to be pitching me to help us and our and some of the challenges we're facing." And I think that was the day we won Brad over, and, and Brad has been just instrumental to uh, providing us great advice and success. And so and so is Ariel. Uh, so that was the early early point where you know make sure whatever it is that you know best is is ready and and present that to the advisors and and you know if they're interested uh, then then they'll invest too and that's the best case scenario yeah that's a great story how did you even think to do that i mean i i don't know if i would have even thought of that uh it was really on the fly uh, oh, we basically you know had sketch we had this big stupid PowerPoint presentation that we were going to walk through and we just kind of threw that to the wolves and, and said, hey man, let's talk about what you guys have going on and um, it was really impromptu. We kind of looked at each other and we're like, are we doing this? And, you know, we, like, we were doing it so uh, uh, ended up working out. Nice. So what's two things you'd recommend? So people, you know, right now the audience may be thinking, I need to find that mentor, that advisor. What are things you, two things you did to bring um, those superstar advisors on, whether it was Scott or Simon or Lee or Brad. Yeah, and, you know, all of our advisors are superstars. You know, I'd like to throw in Dennis Gross as well as a very active angel uh, who, who just provide, provides tremendous advice to the company. But, um, you know, the, the thing is this, like, nobody wants to be the first one in the restaurant. Nobody wants to be in an empty restaurant. And so you have to build great rapport and work your way into bigger Ponds. And so um, for us to have Brad and Ariel on the board, you, you never would have Scott Ingram if Brad and Ariel weren't there because he would said, well, you know, these guys don't have that much going on. They don't have a ton of traction. It doesn't look like there are too many kind of hitters associated with the business. And so, you know, that helped us get Scott on board. And, you know, having Scott on board and he co-invested in the round with Dennis Gross, you know, those guys were really instrumental in helping us recruit even more advisors. And I do call it recruiting because advisors have a finite amount of time. Right. And finite resources. And if you want, you know, you might be one of their 30 investments. And so they, they, they might be a, an advisor but, but never show up and never give you any actual advice. And so there's this kind of reciprocal agreement where like, hey, you guys are going to give advice. We're going to take your advice. We want your advice. Because a lot of entrepreneurs don't listen to the advice of their advisors. And uh, I've, I've fallen into that trap myself. And so, you know, when you do ask somebody for their help, take their advice um, and don't ask them if you're not going to take it. Uh, but having that, you know, keep that kind of empty restaurant uh, scenario in the back of your mind because working your way up and building an advisory board over years, not months, is the proper way to do it in my opinion. And then you have, you know, further you have the stability in your business to help you attract the next wave of potential advisors. And I also think it's very important to have fresh blood. Uh, so, you know, every 24 months is kind of when advisors kind of roll off the advisory board, and, and that's a pretty standard Silicon Valley kind of vesting schedule, you know, straight line and uh, um, 
amortization over 24 months. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's something that's important because new people are going to bring fresh ideas and your company is going to change dramatically every single year. Uh, and you're going to have bigger and um, better challenges that somebody else's skill set might be more helpful in. No, I mean, you make up a, you make a good point, which is they're busy. And so when they give you advice, you should, you know, at least consider it or show that you're taking it very seriously. What was a time where you remember taking someone's advice that, um, that you got that was essential or important? Oh, you know, I think, uh, Scott Ingram, um, uh, you know, founder of rent.com, as you'd mentioned, has given us some really valuable lessons. Uh, and the, their lessons, not just in business, but kind of in manhood. You know, Scott, Scott is a, a, a Texan, you know, born and raised, big fan of the Longhorns. Um, and, you know, he, he tells it like it is. And having that type of kind of straight shooter in your advisory board, who's not going to sugarcoat things, who's going to tell you that, you know, the hard stuff that nobody else is going to actually tell you yeah. is really valuable. And, and most people don't, have that ability to to um, to give you direct feedback when you need it most. So making sure that there is somebody on the board that does that, who actually knows what they're talking about, is is incredibly valuable as an entrepreneur. So what did he tell you that was hard to hear? If you... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I won't tell you the specifics, but I will tell you that Scott has a way about him where um, he fills you full of confidence. And so I think we, we had scheduled it, an hour call with Scott. We don't do that anymore. It's always two hour calls with Scott. Um, because the first kind of 20 minutes was, God, I think you guys are really onto something. You're doing an amazing job. Uh, I think you guys are two of the smartest people I've ever met. Uh, gosh, I'd love it if you'd marry my daughter. No, I'm kidding about the last part, but like, uh, and then it was like an hour and 40 minutes was just being berated on, you know, just some of the mistakes we were making. And it was good. It was, it was, you know, a taste, it was medicine, right? Right. And the medicine doesn't always taste good, but you still need it to be healthy. I asked because it's probably the same mistake I'm making or other people are making. So I wanted to hear from a selfish perspective, not, not to, you know, bring up any personal stuff, but to hear from a personal standpoint, what was something that you were doing wrong that he's like just flat out told you that you're like, had, uh, you had to digest it for a second before agreeing. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of entrepreneurs get a little too big for their britches. And so it was, um, uh, I think we needed a little humbling, and uh, and, and it was uh, it was rough at the time, but uh, it's fun to talk about now. So uh, uh, anybody that can humble you uh, is is uh, a good person to have associated with your company, because up until that point, it's really just your parents who are the only ones that can humble you. So right, got it. So John, I, I get this question a lot too: is for successful founders and entrepreneurs, people want to know kind of their day-to-day. -day. Like, what's in your routine? What are some tools, software, systems you use in your life and business to stay productive? Sure. Um, let's see. So, uh, I have three tabs open on my Chrome browser at all times. Uh, Gmail, uh, my calendar, and uh, Workflowy. Uh, Workflowy, I think, launched in the last 12 months. Um, it's kind of like a to-do list, uh, and I find it really helpful hmm. because <clears throat> I like to transition Emails, if I'm not going to respond to them right away, you know, or they're bigger ticket items, I put them in workflow and then I address those as, as time arises or as I can schedule time. On the calendar side, besides just using kind of Google Calendar online, I'll use uh, the app Sunrise on my iPhone, mm -hmm. um, which I find to be very valuable. I think what they're building is really cool. Um, I think they just raised a small round of funding too, so excited to see that uh, product continue to, to evolve and take shape. Uh, on a day-to-day, -day, I'm, I'm in Google Analytics constantly. Spend a lot of time there, uh, just seeing what the traction is of our website, uh, seeing where we can improve engagement, uh, tracking specific metrics. Uh, and then um, I'm a big fan of Optimizely. Uh, a friend of mine, Pete Kuman, runs that company, uh, along with Dan Stroker, and, and they've built a, a pretty uh, amazing uh, way to, to A-B test your website without having engineers involved which is a non-technical founder is very helpful to a guy like me. So I've talked to Dan. Work. Dan, it's amazing, their software, yeah. It really is. And they just raised a, a big round from Benchmark oh. uh, that was announced today, so congrats to them. Wow. Um, so I have one final question, but before I ask it, I want you to tell people a little bit more about, you know, apartment, you know, apartment list and what you're working on now. Sure. Um, you know, biggest thing about apartment list is we're really uh, – attacking Craigslist 
rental circle, and we wanted this intermediate Craigslist. Uh, and you know, for us, it's there's already a rental marketplace, so it's more about reimagining what that rental marketplace should look like. And we think it should be based on a foundation of trust and transparency for renters and landlords. So um, our strategy is to have as many um, listings on that on our map as possible, and so that we give any consumer that comes to our site the most comprehensive search experience that they can find online. And so our team of 46 is working tirelessly to bring that to consumers and provide tools for landlords as well. So you know, we're really excited about that, and um, we really think that Craigslist has left the door open uh, for apartment lists to, to come in and build a much better experience, and ultimately our hope is to, to reinvent the entire rental marketplace. Yeah, and then so what kind of things are you working on right now that you're excited about? The biggest thing that uh, I'm excited about today is um, we are launching our mobile app in a couple months oh, uh, cool. this summer. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we think that there are some real game-changing features that our renters are going to find incredibly useful. So I can't unveil those yet, but uh, uh, keep your, uh, follow, follow me on Twitter, uh, at John Cobbs, and, uh, and, and you'll find out mm-hmm. the day that we launch. Nice. So everyone should check out apartmentlist.com. They do have a, a really sleek design, and you need to check out their Meet Our Team page, which I spent about 15 minutes, uh, and you'll see why when you go on there. Um, the last question I had, John, is I know you said like one of the biggest influences in your life to be a, a great CEO was football. And can you tell me the feeling when you scored your first touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> well, it took me a, a long time. Uh, so most people like score their first touchdown when they're like six years old. Um, I, had a, I had a little different journey. Um, my, uh, my folks uh, wouldn't let me play until I was 17 years old. So I was already uh, uh, pretty old uh, and, and, you know, had, had failed at a lot of different sports and was bound to fail at football too, but I said, let's give it the college a try. Uh, and so I uh, uh, ended up kind of working out a lot, running a lot, and uh, uh, was terrible. I was terrible at football <laughs> as a junior in high school. I played like JV as a junior, which is like nobody ever does. And especially in like a small town where I'm from where like everybody plays both sides. Everybody has to play offense and defense. I was the guy that played neither. Uh, so um, as a senior in high school, I ended up uh, having a, a rough experience. I ended up blowing out my knee uh, in the homecoming game. So like not only was I terrible at football, but uh, also injured on top of it. And uh, I was going to school at, at Case Western Reserve um, University in Cleveland that I'm very fond of. And uh, uh, ended up kind of signing up to say, hey, football is an, in, an interest of mine. And lo and behold, the football coach reached out, sent me the, uh, the, the guide to the, the workout regimen for the summer. So I ended up uh, signing up for the workouts and uh, uh, roll in my freshman year. So this is a long story to tell you how I scored a touchdown because it took a long time. <laughs> my freshman year uh, was terrible again. I was third string behind two freshmen. Uh, I had a huge knee brace that I wore. And um, and finally uh, ended up running track uh, later, you know, both winter and spring seasons, and then uh, started my first game as a sophomore at running back for for the Case Western Reserve Spartans uh, Division Three football team. But uh, uh, ended up going on to score a lot of touchdowns, and uh, the first one was pretty amazing. I I probably could have walked in uh, to the right side. I was wide open because my offensive line was amazing. And uh, instead of doing that, I was, like, so excited to get in the end zone, I basically jumped over my right guard and hit him in the head, and I, he says I gave him a concussion. So he doesn't do that against me to this day because he's about 100 pounds more than me. But uh, uh, no, that, was, that was the first touchdown, and I uh, was fortunate to score uh, several more after, uh, after that over a couple of years. I love it. Thanks, John. And, John, I know you're a busy man, so thank you so much for joining us and telling us your stories. Oh, Jeremy, it's been great. Pleasure to meet you, and I look forward to chatting more soon. Thanks.